This is a wow moment. Look at that face. I remember this moment so clearly. This girl had been playing with the Haberman spear, pushing it and pulling it, trying to figure out how it worked, with a look of real concentration on her face. And then all of a sudden, she threw it in the air, and it expanded into this giant rainbow orb, and her face lit up with pure wonder and joy. I've collected memories of thousands of wow moments just like this. And they all have one thing in common. They all happen when people are being curious and playing with science with their hands. I'm not talking about complex scientific theories or years and years of academic pursuit. I'm talking about the science in our everyday, the stuff that brings our world to life. It happens at home, in the workplace, outside, even in our own bodies. And it doesn't have to be serious. It can be frivolous. I'm going to take you back to the 17th of December, 2017. This was a day of great excitement, both in my home and at Curiosity Box HQ. It's the day when Star Wars The Force Awakens is released. So we're all chatting about what the plot twists might be and who the characters are. And Sarah Birchill, my fascination maker, says to me, you know how they make the laser blaster sound, right? And I'm thinking, well, I'm sure that that's a computer-generated sound. So off she pops into our Curiosity storeroom, and she came back with a slinky and a bowl, just like these. In fact, I think this might be the actual ones. And this bowl has a tiny hole in the bottom, and she proceeded to thread the slinky through the bowl, like so. Pop this down here. This is a uh, winning party trick that I'm gifting you today. Thread it through like that, and then she asked me to close my eyes, and I'm going to ask you to do the same. If you, didn't, if you won't mind closing your eyes for me. And she did this. You can open your eyes if you haven't already. And this is the genuine way that they created that original, iconic sound. And all it took was for somebody to look at the slinky and think, as the sound wave travels through that metal, all we really need is for something to amplify that sound. And what better thing than a simple bowl? And that is the beauty of this kind of science. It is accessible to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, what your background, your gender. You don't need specialist skills or any kind of particular knowledge or equipment. In fact, you can be an unusual scientist like me. You see, I was born in a rural town in Australia, single parent family. I didn't know anyone who'd been to university, let alone anyone who was a scientist. And we know that actually that makes me much more unlikely to become a scientist. But I was obsessively passionate about curiosity. I was one of those kids who used to drive my mother mad, asking why, all the time. And it is that asking of questions that is the first secret to discovering the science in your everyday and rediscovering your curiosity. Asking questions is an incredibly powerful tool. And I would argue that in, the, in this day and age, when we have access to so much information, asking questions is even more important for us to be able to decipher what's good quality information and what's not. It doesn't also matter what kind of questions you might want to ask. There are things like, the other day my daughter asked me, Mommy, why are my teeth so slimy? And obviously the short answer is because you haven't brushed your teeth. Uh, but the long answer is far more interesting, and it involves bacteria and how they behave in colonies as biofilms. And that can lead on to discussions about antibiotic resistance and really big, serious problems. And the beauty of our online world is that, like never before, 
do we have the access to people who might be able to actually answer some of those questions? Asking questions takes bravery, and the older we get, the less we tend to ask questions. We become inhibited about the questions we ask. We don't want people to judge us or to think it's a stupid question. So answering, asking questions is a really important part of curiosity. The other thing that you need to be curious is your inbuilt scientific equipment. This is the stuff that babies and children are brilliant at. All you need to do is look at a young child. They put everything in their mouths to test and taste the world around them. Now, I'm not suggesting you should necessarily put scientific experiments in your mouth, but it's a great way of exploring. It's a sense that we can use to discover more about the world around us. Young children will bring themselves closer to the thing that they want to understand so that they can hear better and see better. We have an incredibly sophisticated sense of smell. My children can identify the owner of a school jumper, any school jumper, just by smelling it. And then we have our hands. I would argue our most powerful piece of scientific equipment. When you were a child, I want you to think back to when you were about seven years old. What was it that you loved to do? Was it mixing things together to try and make a potion? Or perhaps you loved building Lego. Maybe you were the kid who loved to collect beetles outside and look at their shiny wings. Me, I was the child who loved to take things apart, much to my mother's consternation. I have a very vivid memory of taking apart the VCR in our house, which shows my age, but I really wanted to know how that worked. I nearly got it back together in the same way as it started, but I found out so much about the mechanics of, of the VCR. So we have this incredible equipment right inside us that we can use to explore the science in our everyday. But as we get older, we tend to move away from that kinesthetic, curiosity-led learning into a more intellectual curiosity. And with that comes worry and anxiety. This is a blank piece of paper. I want you to imagine I give you this blank piece of paper, and I tell you, draw whatever you like. How does that make you feel? For some of you, that might be really exciting, but for many of you, that will immediately cause you to feel anxious. And this is the experience I had about a year ago when I was invited to give a science workshop to a group of senior citizens in our village. This is a workshop that happens once a month where they bring together the over 65s and give them some kind of fun and engaging experience or a, a talk on an interesting topic. And I took this activity, which I do in schools all the time. It's called our DIY Light Up Gift Card. And you build an electric circuit into a gift card that you've designed in whatever way you like, and you make it light up. I thought, this is going to be great. They're going to love it. I told them, I gave them their blank piece of paper, and I told them to draw whatever they liked. And the room fell still and silent. They were worried about their artistic skills. They were worried about what they might draw. They couldn't think. Their mind shut down, and it became the biggest barrier to them accessing this activity. I was really shocked, really surprised. Now, eventually, through a lot of coaxing and encouragement, we did get them to get their picture down on paper, and they really loved the activity. They left with a smile on their face. So this was my proof that grown-ups can have wow moments, too. And I think this could be the secret to us filling our lives with a little more wonder. Let's start in the brain. In the striatum of the brain are the highest concentration of dopamine receptors. We normally associate dopamine, that pleasure and happiness hormone, with release when we get a reward. But science tells us that it's actually the moments before the reward, before we know the outcome, when the dopamine release is at its highest. This is the time when we're not sure what the outcome might be, 
when we might be thinking of options, perhaps taking a risk, and we're really, really curious. That's great, but dopamine is the kind of quick and dirty happy hormone. What we really want is long-term, sustained happiness. And this is where curiosity really comes into its own. Because as we're curious, the other part of the brain that really lights up is the hippocampus. This is the part of the brain where serotonin release happens and where our memories are formed. So curiosity gives us this beautiful, positive feedback loop where we get long-term, positive memories forming about the happy moment that we've just experienced. And this is the antidote to that worry that we tend to get ourselves into as we grow up. But it's not just about what happens in our brain, it's about our experiences in life. I want to introduce you to a theory called science capital. And the idea behind science capital is that we're all born with a suitcase. Depending on who you are and what family you were born into, where you're born, your science capital suitcase will be more or less full. When I was born, mine was pretty empty. And we fill our science capital suitcase through the experiences we have, science museum visits, science we do at school, scientists we might meet, these all add to that suitcase. Which is fine, but actually, where we have the most power to fill our own science capital suitcase is through exploring the science in our everyday. And the good news is that the more you fill that suitcase, the better your life prospects are in terms of health, wealth, even morbidity. So there's a powerful reason to encourage you to take a risk and be more curious. It's also not just about us as individuals. When we first launched Curiosity Box, the overwhelming thing I heard from grown-ups was science was boring at school. Science is too hard. Science, definitely not for me. What we've seen over the last few years is that by children doing science at home, and I mean experiments with their hands, where they're bringing in that world of their home laboratory, has brought the whole family on board. Whole families, even grandparents, are having extraordinary experiences with science at home. And the, th the words that I hear have changed. I'm starting to hear things like, oh, I wish I had have had something like this when I was a kid, and I might have liked science if it had been like this. And it doesn't stop there. When you're curious and you're exploring the world and you're discovering that overwhelming beauty of this amazing planet that we live on, it makes it incredibly difficult for us to make choices that we know are going to harm the planet. Take the plastic pollution problem as an example. In just a year, through a huge amount of curiosity-driven innovation, we have dramatically started to address that problem. Still a long way to go, obviously, but we're getting there, and that is a really short amount of time for even corporates to be starting to take action. So I think that by leading a more curiosity-led life, we have the opportunity as a community to make a big difference to this planet. And not only that, those kids doing those activities are going to be the ones who are confident in the future to be our big thinkers, the ones who are coming up with the solutions that we really, really need. For me, discovering the science in my everyday was like turning an old-fashioned black-and-white TV into full Technicolor. I remember my first wow moment. I was walking along a river with my mum, and she pointed out to me that the water was made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. And my mind ignited the thought that this thing that I had looked at superficially for so long was actually far more complex, far more interesting than I had ever imagined, lit my world on fire. And ever since then, I've wanted to scratch the surface of everything that I see to try and discover the science that's underneath it. And that has meant that my life has been filled with a huge amount of curiosity. 
and a huge amount of wonder and joy. Einstein said, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. So I ask you, how would it feel if you chose to look at your world through the lens of science just a little bit more? What if you could fill your life with a few more wow moments, maybe once a month, once a week, maybe even once a day? How would that make you feel? How would that change you? And could curiosity be the secret to you living a more wonder-filled life? Thank you.